Hello and welcome to lecture 62. We are discussing about the industrial fan design. In last lecture, we were discussing about the compressor design aspects, various aspects we have explored. Then future design train for axial flow compressors and fans. We were discussing about the industrial fans and their application. And this week as we have discussed, that is what is being dedicated for the design of industrial fans. Now, in order to have the design numerical, we have our own design for say wind tunnel fan. And that is the reason why we would like to discuss that design in this lecture. So, this is what is a fan that is what was been designed for say wind tunnel. This wind tunnel is for railway research in India. That is what is been sponsored by say uh, uh, railway research, central for railway research. What all are the expectations in sense of design? We are expecting higher achievable Reynolds number, gradual diffusion, minimum overall structure size, lower pressure drop, uniform flow properties in the test section, low turbulence level of the order of 0.1 percent, low background noise, versatile testing features, minimum operating cost and world class testing facility. With this all design uh, objectives, we have defined with certain applications that is what we would like to explore. They are say this is what will be the first aero acoustic tunnel in India. It will be having features like moving belt for the ground proximity, boundary layer suction and removal, aerodynamic study of atmospheric flare on railway models, ground vehicles and structures, studies of flow over undercarriage wheels, compartment gaps and fairing. So, mainly this tunnel that is what is been required to be designed for say railway research. Now, in order to have this, these are the dimensions which are being defined with. So, details are our test section that is what will be of 2.5 meter by 2 meter by 10 meter. Overall length that will be 66 meter by 23 meter. Reynolds number that is what is 1.8 into 10 to the power 6. Test speed that is 250 kilometers per hour that is what will be the speed of say maximum speed of the future train. Contraction ratio for the nozzle that is what is 9. Wind tunnel energy ratio is 3.5. Axial fan diameter that is 4000 mm. Fan hub diameter that will be 24 mm. Maximum RPM is 500 RPM. Pressure rise it is 1400 Pascal. Mass flow rate that will be 420 kg per second. Power rating for the motor that will be 750 kilowatt and design pressure gain that is what is 1.4 times of the loss. So, basically our design targets are this. So, if you look at here, we are looking for fan that need to be designed with a special requirement of casing diameter of around 4 meter, hub diameter that will be 2.4 meter. The rotational speed for this fan will be maximum by 500 rpm and motor capacity that is what is 750 kilowatt. So, let us look at what all we have explored here. So, this is what is a final CFD simulation for the wind tunnel that is what will be developed at IIT Kharagpur in collaboration with railways. So, here if you look at this is what is a fan that is what need to be designed in order to run this wind tunnel and this is what is with full scale we have done the simulation using CFD. So, more detail that is what is available in this paper those who are interested can go through this paper and this is what is say the drawing that is what will be giving idea. So, this tunnel that is what will be used both for say open jet configuration as well as in a closed configuration. And this is what is our test section if you look at that is what is giving more uniform flow as per our expectation. So, now here this is what we are looking for in terms of designing. 
So let's discuss about the design of this fan. So the details are closed circuit wind tunnel facility for the research is proposed with an atmospheric test section having dimensions of 2.5 meter by 2 meter. Maximum test section speed is 250 kilometers per hour to be achieved using single axial flow fan installed inside the facility. This is what is a fan we are discussing about. The aerodynamic design of wind tunnel suggests the total pressure drop is 1000 Pascal across the complete circuit. So, say from inlet to outlet, if we are going through our design calculation based on the standard formula, it says the pressure drop in the whole circuit will be of 1000 Pascal. The size constraint of the tunnel limits the outer fan diameter to be 4 meter. Calculated driving power and available motor size and capacity restricts the maximum speed to be 500 rpm. And the design of this fan that need to be done by using the free vortex concept. So now this is what is a real kind of design that is what we can say. So in order to do this design we need to think of how do we proceed with. We are having constraints that is what is already been defined with. What all are the possibilities for such kind of design? So let us look at what all we have understood. We have our inlet pressure, temperature, we know our pressure ratio, T section velocity that is what is say 70 meter per second, mass flow rate, total tip diameter, rotational speed, all those things that is what we need to decide with. So mainly here if you look at this is what is our important parameter for the design of this fan. So how do we start with is to estimate the size, we need to decide with the hub diameter, we need to decide with what will be the rotational speed. Okay. We will be doing our design at 50 percent span, we will be doing our calculation for different velocity components and we will be plotting our velocity triangles for that. Once this is what is known to us. We can calculate our cascade parameters, we can test with our say check parameters called say diffusion factor, degree of reaction, de Euler's factor. We will be doing our calculation for say cascade geometry, stagger angle, camber angle, incidence angle, deviation angle and once this is what is been done at the mid section, we will be going with applying say free vortex design method in order to calculate say parameter at different stations or different location along the span. Now in order to do so, what all we are looking for is in terms of calculating certain parameters. So here in this case what it says my required test action speed it is 250 kilometers per hour. So that is what is coming roughly 70 meter per second. So this is what is the speed we are looking for at the test section. The test section dimension it is 2.5 meter by 2 meters, so area will be 5 meter square. Now in order to calculate our mass flow rate, we can say that is what is given by density into area into what velocity we are looking for and that is what is giving the mass flow rate that is what is 420 kg per second. That is what is on higher side, what all we have discussed up till now, it is not coming in this range. So understand one thing, here we are looking for handling large mass flow rate of 420 kg per second. Now, it says the total pressure rise, it should be sufficient so that you know our fan that will be overcome those losses. Now, the number that is what is based on correlations, empirical correlations available that is covering say test section, diffuser section, turning, veins, bands, then honeycomb section, our say screens, all those parameters that is what need to be calculated and that calculation it is coming around say 1000 Pascal. So here if you look at this is what is representing the performance curve for the fan and 
this is what is representing my performance of the fan in sense of mass flow rate or we can say volumetric flow rate that's what is defined in sense of cfm versus total pressure rise somewhere here this is what is my design point and here if you look at this line that's what is representing system resistance curve so this is what is my fan curve and this is what is my system resistance curve so we need to realize one thing you know with change of my mass to rate we can plot this system resistance curve and at design point that's what is meeting with this point here now with increase of resistance my curve the system curve that's what will be shifting towards the left hand side when we are decreasing our resistance my system curve that's what will be moving on right hand side or high mass flow rate side this is what is very important here okay now in order to account for say additional losses because of say our test model blockage we need to have certain amount of additional pressure losses that need to be counted and thumb rule says we can consider that to be 40% higher we can we can say that's what is around say 1400 pascal though it is calculated as 1000 pascal to be on safe side for the configuration of our test section placement and other losses we are considering that to be 1400 pascal so now we can say we are designing our fan for pressure rise of 1400 pascal mass flow rate that's what is 420 kg per second okay now in order to establish this design here if you look at this is what is a kind of configuration we know this tunnel that's what will be used for both configuration say closed configuration as well as open jet configuration when we say open jet configuration under that condition the pressure rise required will be larger and that's the reason why if we configure my inlet pressure at the fan that's what we are assuming to be one atmosphere that will be coming slightly on higher side but at the same time because of losses at the entry of fan this pressure will be approximately one atmosphere or one we can say one zero one three two five pascal okay now we know what is our entry pressure now what we know is what pressure rise we are expecting with now next step for our design it is to decide with the size and the speed the maximum speed that is what is defined saying like 500 rpm and maximum diameter they both the things are known to us so by that way we can start doing our design but in order to understand what all are the other possibilities because they are also equally important and that's the reason why this design it has been explored in a different way now what we have done we know our mass flow rate that's what is density into area into our axial velocity so the parametric study need to be done in sense of what need to be hub to tip ratio because we are designing our fan we want to design our fan we are not having idea about what is our axial velocity so it is recommended here to go with the parametric part so that's what we have done say initially suppose say we are assuming our axial velocity to be say 25 meter per second if we know our axial velocity we can calculate what will be the pressure and temperature in sense of static terms so static temperature we can calculate it is 297.68 kelvin and static pressure that is coming 100.94 kilopascal and based on that if we calculate our density the, the in that density that is coming 1.18 kg per meter cube now with this if we are putting that in our mass flow rate equation it will give the diameter of the tip and that tip diameter it is coming 2.38 meter that's what is on higher side we have our constraint with the 2 meter diameter and this diameter is coming on the higher side let's check with the rotational speed suppose say i'm assuming say tip speed tip peripheral speed to be 100 meter per second if we are configuring this 
it says my rotational speed it is coming 401.23 rpm that is less than say 500 rpm so this is what is coming in our acceptable range here for the design of fan there is one more possibility as we have discussed you can assume your flow coefficient at the mid station means ca by u mean if you are assuming by that way also you can do your design calculation there is nothing wrong here okay now by going through this formulation it is a confusion in sense of putting say diameter as a constraint because that's what is very important okay when i am playing with say rotational speed and i am playing with say tip diameter both are interrelated and that's what is creating the trouble so let's try to look at what all can be done what it says this is what is representing my hub to tip ratio because that is what is important parameter when we are discussing about the fan design second parameter that's what is a tip ratio and here this is what is representing different values of axial velocity on the other side this is what has been correlated with say hub to tip ratio my rotational speed and axial velocity now what constraint we are having we have upper constraint with the radius it says my tip radius should not exceed by 2 meter okay at the same time we are having constraint with the speed it says it should not be more than say 500 rpm now here in this case we need to decide with what should be our hub to tip ratio so here if you look at this is what all we have discussed earlier when i say hub to tip ratio of 0.8 my hub to tip ratio is 0.4 just realize here in this case when we are taking hub to tip ratio to be larger my hub diameter that's what will be coming to be larger when we say my hub to tip ratio to be smaller my hub diameter is coming smaller now there is a specific meaning here we need to realize we need to select the radius ratio that's the reason why this plot it is been given so we have two possibilities either i will be going with say larger diameter ratio or larger radius ratio or we can go with say smaller radius ratio if you are going with the smaller radius ratio then here in this case we will be having our blade twist that will be coming to be large and that's what is very challenging in sense of matching we must realize the problem that's what will be happening near the hub region okay and that's what we have discussed again and again in sense of observe parameter as degree of reaction okay there is one more possibility we can go with say higher radius ratio if you are going with the higher radius ratio that's what is giving additional endless surface area and it may require more number of blades we can understand when my radius ratio that's what is going to be in high range that's what is the problem now the problem is not with the number of blades at this moment or this our special requirement is this fan need to be rotate with the motor and that motor that need to be accommodated within our wind tunnel in order to have that kind of configuration the diameter of hub should be such that we can put our motor inside okay and looking to this demand if we go through we can select the radius ratio roughly to be in the range of 0.6 suppose i am taking this to be 0.6 this is what is giving us idea what need to be the axial velocity at the same time as we have discussed we have constraint with the rotational speed of the motor because 750 kilowatt motor it's a huge power capacity and that's what will be rotating at the lower speed and that speed that's what is a constraint of say 500 rpm so under that configuration if we will be deciding 0.6 as a radius ratio we will be having our rotational speed that is coming in the range of 475 rpm and our axial velocity that's what is coming to be 43.75 meter per second now here if we are having say rated speed of 500 rpm if we are configuring say slip that's what is happening 
we can say the loss of 5% speed that's what is acceptable and that's the reason why we are saying like 475 rpm that's what is our required rotational speed now understand one thing here so this is what is iterative method with a special requirement up till now what all we have discussed that's what is more in sense of aerodynamics for the selection of say our radius ratio and rotational speed we are defining for compressor as rotational speed of the turbine or suppose say when we are discussing about the compressor design for industrial application that it will be drive with some additional devices or motors so that's what has been placed maybe outside and under that condition we are not having constraints so this is what is a constraint design kind of configuration so now we have come up with our axial velocity with some range our rotational speed with some range now let's see how do we proceed with the design so in order to have did this design what we will be doing we will be taking say axial velocity suppose say 44 meter per second and we will check with whether it is meeting with the requirement of our say radius because this is what is coming 43.75 let's see taking say 44 meter per second if we are taking that we can say our static temperature it is coming 297.04 kelvin same way we can calculate our static pressure that's what is coming 100.18 kilopascal and our density is coming 1.175 kg per meter cube this is what is in line to what calculation we have done earlier now based on that we will be checking with say our radius ratio now for this we are assuming our radius ratio to be 0.6 because we have done our parametric study it says my radius ratio we can configure as a 0.6 if we are putting this as 0.6 my tip diameter is coming 4 meter or we can say my tip radius is coming say 2 meter okay now the hub with lower hub to tip ratio that's what is producing less pressure that's what is our requirement and deliver more amount of mass flow rate with larger annular area and that's what is giving flatter operating characteristic because that is also of our demand we have seen for this particular fan if we are putting our performance map with pressure variation with mass flow rate variation along with our system cow it may be possible that we will be having shift of our system curve towards the high mass flow rate or towards the low mass flow rate configuration okay and that's what is meeting with our requirement so let's say suppose we are taking our tip speed to be 100 meter per second and for that our rotational speed is coming 480 rpm now we can say this is what is in line to what we are looking for say constraint of 4 meter diameter and constraint of our 500 rpm so let's take this as a data for the next calculation for the calculation we have selected our axial velocity to be 44 meter per second and rotational speed to be 480 rpm now we know our tip radius to be 2 meter based on hub to tip ratio we can say our hub radius that's coming 1.2 meter and mean radius that's what we can calculate is coming to be 1.6 meter okay so based on that we can do our calculation for tip mark number because we need to check with whether our flow near the tip is going on high subsonic side or is it going on a transonic region so here if we are putting this as a number it says my tip mark number it is going 0.31 we can say this is what is low, low subsonic kind of configuration okay so now we have fixed with all our radius we have fixed with our axial velocity next we will be doing our calculation design calculation at the mid station now for mid station what we know we are expecting our pressure rise to be 1400 pascal so based on our understanding we can say delta t0 at the mid station it is given by this formula let's assume this polytropic efficiency to be 
94.5 percent this is what is slightly on a higher side we are going aggressively in sense of design we are looking for a higher efficiency and that's the reason we are selecting this to be 94.5 percent now for that if we are putting our energy balance and aerodynamic work we can get what will be our world component distribution at the mid station now entry for this fan we are assuming to be axial and that's the reason why cw1 at the mid station is zero and if you are putting that in this equation it gives me world distribution to be 15.78 meter per second now once we are having mid station calculation we know our alpha that's zero we can say from our inlet velocity triangle we can calculate our beta that's what is um by ca my mid station peripheral speed is known we can calculate our beta 1 we can calculate same way beta 2 now this beta 1 is coming 61.31 degree and beta 2 is coming 55.75 degree my delta beta in this case it is coming 5.56 degree now we can calculate what will be our exit absolute flow angle and this is what is coming as a 19.72 we know this is what is required for the calculation and design of my stator okay now based on the velocity triangle since this is what is say axial entry we can say relative velocity at the entry is given by ca by cos beta 1 and this is coming 91.65 meter per second same way relative velocity at the exit it is coming as 78.18 meter per second we can calculate our d holers factor and this is what is coming as 0.85 that's what is greater than 0.72 what we are looking for at this moment the next parameter that is important for us is to calculate the degree of reaction at mid station what is our world distribution and what is our mean peripheral speed that's what is giving degree of reaction to be in the range of 0 0.90 now after doing all this calculation we need to have the parameter that's what is called diffusion factor and we are looking for cascade parameters also to be calculated with here in this case say we are looking for what need to be the chord for the rotor so in order to do that calculation we are assuming the aspect ratio as say 1.78 if we are assuming this as 1.78 we will be getting our chord as 450 mm okay there is nothing wrong in assuming aspect ratio to be different this is what is coming with number of iterations and that's the reason why straightway i have kept this aspect ratio as 1.78 you can go with the number of iterations in order to achieve the blade chord now once this is what is known to us next calculation it is for the selection of number of blades now here in this case also we have two possibilities either we can assume our diffusion factor and based on that we can calculate our solidity and number of blades okay second possibility is you can assume the number of blades and based on those assumed number of blade we can do calculation for the solidity we can do calculation for the diffusion factor now here we will be doing this calculation in a different way rather assuming diffusion factor or rather assuming number of blade let's try with some other approach so we will be selecting our solidity that's what is 0.54 at the mid station now this 0.54 if you will be putting in the equation that's what is giving number of blades to be say 12.11 we can say roughly to be 12 blades okay now once this number of blades they are been calculated we can do calculation for say our cascade parameters so we will be calculating our carter's slope factor based on our calculation of beta 1 and beta 2 
that is coming point 298 we can calculate our camber angle at the mid station assuming zero incidence angle at the mid station that is giving camber angle of 9.75 degree now deviation angle also we can calculate based on carter's rule it is coming 4.18 we can calculate our say stagger angle this stagger angle it is coming 56.44 degree so based on all this calculation we are able to calculate the parameters at the mid station now what is our next requirement it is to calculate the flow angles at different stations so what we will be doing we will be dividing whole span into maybe 10 or 20 number of stations here in this case we are dividing that into more number of stations we know for free vortex we can calculate our cw into r that's what is constant and that's what we will be applying here it say cw into r equal to constant towards say from mid station to tip same way we can say cw into r equal to constant from mid station to the hub that's what will be helping us for calculation of say whirl component at the exit cw2 once this cw2 that that is known to us we can complete our velocity triangle we can calculate our flow angles we can calculate all other parameters which are been required so here in this case if you are looking at we will be doing our calculation at the hub and the tip station so we are incorporating our free vortex concept that's what will be giving the cw at hub as say 21.04 meter per second and cw2 at the tip is say 12.63 meter per second and that's what will be helping us in sense of making this particular design say so we are having our hub station mid station and tip station calculation now once we are doing our calculation for hub mid and tip station it is very important to further discuss the modification and the design so for present lecture we are stopping here with say having calculation at mid station having calculation at hub station and tip station in next lecture we will be discussing about what all modification we need to explore in order to achieve desired performance thank you thank you very much